Amen. Well, thank you guys for that worship. In a minute, I'm going to be handing over to Anne. Um, we're going to have something a bit different as it's our 150th. Um, Anne is going to have a conversation with Bishop Stephen. But before that, um, I'm going to read our reading for today. And it's all about Barnabas. It's in Acts 11, verses 19 to 30. And this is what it says. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed, travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, went to, went to Antioch and began to spread to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anne, over to you. So, Bishop Stephen, it's such a joy to welcome you to our 150th year celebrations. Thanks so much for joining us today. And of course, we're in this uh, uncharted territory of uh, broadcasting from uh, each other's homes. So, uh, whereabouts are you uh, in your home at the moment? Well, I'm in um, uh, I'm in my city in my sitting room in the bishop's house in the Ely next door to the cathedral, and um, you can just see behind me the bottom of a portrait of um, of my favourite predecessor, um, Edward Wynne, who was the bishop during the Second World War, um, and uh, he, very elderly people still remember him. Well, he died when I, the year I was born, but people still remember him as as a a man who was godly and kind and quite jolly. <laughs> also was famous for raising the clergy stipend. Oh, excellent. Oh, I like him, <laughs> I like him already. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's, a lovely, it's a lovely um, light room, and, um, uh, and, uh, which I enjoy very much. And, the, um, and uh, as it were, in front of me, I'm looking across to a piano with uh, lots of family photographs on it uh, and precious things, just like I see you've got some, some lovely things beside you. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, and I have some, uh, I have some books. I have um, one thousand holes of golf to play before you die. Um, oh, that's, that's one of the books on that shelf. And uh, is that right? And then Scotland from the air, photograph from the air, which is a fantastic book of. Well, I know that you're, a, you're. I know you're a keen golfer. I have an uncle who's a, a Catholic priest, and uh, you know the answer phone. I think he, he doesn't do it anymore, but the answer phone used to, I think, say, "Father's away on a course." <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, as I say, so much for joining us. And uh, we're um, celebrating the 150th. And one of the things I uh, love about the story of St. Barnabas that, is that it was uh, started by uh, a pioneering community of Christians who, uh, from uh, the front room of a house just three streets down from here, a street called Covent Garden, um, they started to meet in order to share Jesus with railway workers who'd recently moved into the area this is back in the 19th century. Yeah. Uh, and then in um, 1870, the church itself uh, was founded. Uh, and I, I love the fact that at the very outset, our church was founded with a purpose to reach people who didn't know Jesus yet. Uh, and the inspiration uh, for our church uh, was really founded on the name of St. Barnabas, who we uh, read about in Acts 11. And mm. I'd love to hear your reflections mm. on on Barnabas. Well, because he's a person who lived up to his name, wasn't he, as a son of encouragement, um, a person who, um, who looked, who, who had that sort of um, <clears throat> profound 
uh, insight into what it is not just to talk about Jesus, but to live for him. And, and how to, and that takes you always onto the edge into, into new places. Often a place is not very comfortable. You know, he gets sent by the church in Jerusalem to check out what's going on in Antioch. Yeah. Um, he could have gone to close it all down, you know, a sort of, you know, from the, the man from the top, the man from the top show comes to say, no, no, you're not doing this right. Uh, and he says, and of course, there'd been some other frightened, persecuted Christians who'd made their way to Antioch and were sort of all keeping it very quiet because they were scared. Then others come and the whole field opens up to, um, to people who uh, previously thought we, we can't talk to them because they're, out, they're, they're, they're dangerous, they're, they're Greeks, they're not like us. And, um, but Barnabas comes as a, as, as a Hellenistic Jew himself. He comes and sees what God is doing. It's an electrifying uh, new way, leaping across the boundaries that human beings put up and says, and then blesses it. You know, he, he, he could have come to close it down. He, what he does, in fact, is to bless it and inspire and encourage people. And that's why we see the church growing. And people, you know, many people becoming believers and and transforming what had been a frightened tiny community into a community that's reach actually looking out all the time and in fact you know when the famine comes to jerusalem it's the the new church um the um dodgy christians as it were who are sending food to the established christians in jerusalem so they're kind of it's interesting isn't it how how um you know with jesus it's often pretty it's the, turn the world the world upside down because um, and people therefore are called to look for the signs of the activity of, the, of um, the Holy Spirit bringing people to Jesus. And how do we contribute to that uh, as pioneers, as, as the people who are moving to the edge and always looking outwards? I mean, obviously, you as, as the leader of the, of, of the St. Barnabas uh, Church and all its community, uh, communities uh, scattered around the city and beyond, um, it's your job, isn't it, to be a sentinel? to be looking to the edge, to see where, where new opportunities uh, are coming from. You and the PCC are looking to see where are the fresh opportunities uh, for, uh, for pioneering and for planting and to see how do we, in our strength, move outwards um, to transform lives and communities for Jesus' sake. And I think that's what Barnabas does. And of course, the other thing about Barnabas teaches us is that um, if we're going to release pioneers, we have to grow, we grow people past us. Uh, what Barnabas, of course, does, he goes, and, he goes to Tarsus to seek out Paul. Now, Barnabas at this stage is a much more significant Christian person uh, than, uh, than Paul is. Paul is this person people still regard with suspicion mm -hmm. from persecutor to, to transformed disciple. It's Barnabas who goes and takes him from seclusion and says, look, come and work with me. And we can make, and, and in Jesus' name, we'll make great things happen. And Barnabas, as far as we can tell, is very content that Paul outshines him. And there'll be people in St. Barnabas communities now um, who are getting ready, and they'll be doing wonderful things in Jesus' name that you, you won't be able to do, you know, as the vicar. Yeah. And I think it's about how how you and other leaders in the church are growing people past you, like Barnabas did with, with Paul and others. That's, uh, that's uh, very releasing and very uh, encouraging to hear that. And um, I can see that in the, in the background of St Barnabas, again, just looking back to the, the history, that linking in with Antioch being very much of a sending church, it, it oh. sent out uh, mm -hmm. lots of people. So, St Barnabas, again, right in its foundation, started, um, I mean, we were planting a church as this church was being built, which yes. is extraordinary. Um, the Cambridge University students, they invested in the next generation. They were raising up the Sunday school. Yep. And one of those Cambridge University students was um, Sally Peregrine Smith, who was one of the Cambridge Seven who went to China uh, and on an overseas mission. So all of that was is very much in our history and is is hugely exciting and it's very, and also it's very, it's very encouraging isn't it that if you can um, <clears throat> um if you can measure up to that sort of victorian uh, confidence in the gospel 
and, and having a sort of um, a worldwide, you know, indeed a worldwide vision for what might, might be accomplished in transforming the world. I mean, even, even the bishop was keen, I see, uh, in, in, help, in encouraging subscriptions to, for the building of the church and what an important community he, the bishop saw it as uh, in bringing the gospel to people who, um, who in, the industrialized, in an industrialized city um, were um, not be, their needs were not being met yeah. um, in, the, in the central Cambridge churches. And so St. Barnabas was meeting a real need um, that people who have been excluded from the gospel were to be were to receive it. Yeah, yes. I mean, one of the things he said at, the, at that time uh, was uh, the, the bishop said at that time was there's a rapidly there is rapidly growing in that neighbourhood a large population which will not connect itself easily and naturally with any existing church. Hmm. It has moreover a congregation from which its characters a claim on the whole of Cambridge. For though living in one spot, it ministers to and naturally arises out of the necessities of both university and the town. And as you uh, just alluded to, I mean, in, in many ways, both our parish and our Barnabas communities, um, mm. the, these multiple contexts that we're trying to reach have many similarities with that, uh, people not naturally connecting uh, with church. Yeah. Um, what would you say to encourage the people of St Barnabas in the present day to do that? Well, I, I know, just wandering down Mill Lane, your end of Mill Lane, and seeing, for instance, you know, you've got this wonderful now, this wonderful threshold in the renewal of your building. And, and it's a very welcoming threshold. But of course, people can be quite fearful about crossing thresholds for the first time. Yeah. And so, um, so I think that one of the things that inspires me about uh, you as, as a set of communities, in particular as a parish, is the level of welcome that you have worked out that's both professional and sincere, it, it, it's the real, the real deal. But also to bear in mind that you have homeless people, you know, drinking, uh, sitting on your, on, on your church wall. And I know, <clears throat> you know, members of your community um, make a deliberate point <clears throat> to go and, uh, and engage with uh, the people who feel they've been just dropped out of the bottom of society. Mm. And I just think that, and you know, you've really got a multicultural uh, place, um, the Mill Road, Mill Road is, a place where there are lots of people of uh, there are lots of people of other faiths than ours, um, <clears throat> but um, real opportunities to engage um, uh, in our current culture. You know the thing about Barnabas and and the other church leaders in, in Antioch had the courage. Um, uh, not in a, you know, in our secular age, it seems to me that the, the more secularization there is, the more religious we should be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and, uh, and I think that um, our yeah. being more religious is engaging with our culture um, uh, sensitively um, with re real research into what the trends are, but, but mostly responding um, with greater and greater courage yes. um, to, ex to, to, to share our faith. And, and of course, that's what Barnabas did, not, not only in Anticot, but on, on, the, on the missionary journeys engaging with Paul. Yeah. Um, and you know, they, they got into real trouble, you know, they, <laughs> yeah. um, and, but they risked all uh, for the sake of the gospel. And that's what, that was what ener I'm sure what energized St. Barnabas in the, you know, in the, the, your community from 1870 and before, what energized them was, well, let's go for it. Let's, let's share the good news of Jesus Christ and, um, and not worry um, too much about ourselves. So you're, you're talking there about that combination of confidence, generosity and courage. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the thing is that you, um, because um, <clears throat> you can't be committed to growth um, unless um, you prepare the ground, you know, and that's pr pr primarily preparing the ground in people's lives so that um, people are equipped, you know, um, to... Um, uh, not only to proclaim Jesus loudly, but um, to whisper him into people's ears, um, to make him known in very unlikely situations. <clears throat> and that could be, you know, when, as when you cry for on a golf course, what else are you going to cry, you know, uh, to somebody? Um, and that could, uh, it could be in a cafe or in, in a, in a, in a uh, at the roadside, but it would have, in somebody's sitting room. And at the moment, when we're speaking like this, 
yeah. uh, it, making the, the fullest use of the technology mm. um, to uh, both communicate and, of course, to use opportunities to inspire people with uh, with beautiful worship online that um, they can't access at the moment um, in the flesh. And it's how to be, it's just being, be bold, Anne, that's the thing, be bold. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Right, we will go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, one of the things that we're, you know, looking to the future is uh, with our Barnabas communities to go into more uh, diverse situations. Uh, we want to do pioneering with sports mission. Yeah. And Kids Matter. Uh, we're feeling a calling to uh, go into areas where there's uh, more situations with social deprivation. Mm. And of course, we've got our continuing response to the situation created by the COVID-19 uh, yeah. pandemic. Um, mm. So all of that is something that's part of the future that we're, we're kind of moving into. So we definitely need that boldness and courage to go into it. Uh, one, other, one other aspect of this coming year is a a few years ago, uh, you said to us, uh, uh, as, a, as a church, we need to plant. You gave us a yeah, yeah. clear yeah. thing. You said, come on, St Barnabas, think about planting. And what we'd hoped for today was that we would have been in our building, uh, telling all the plans for planting, and that you would be sending us out into that. Mm. Uh, lockdown has slowed that down necessarily because of the, the plans. But... Uh, what I am able to share today is that uh, working with your diocesan team, uh, mm. we have a plan for Danny, our curate, uh, mm. to plant in the summer of uh, 2021, which is mm. incredibly exciting, and that's significant in this next year. Um, I think it's very, I mean, it's very exciting. I think Danny has got a real, has, you know, the Lord has given him a, a real heart for this, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, he grew up, because he grew, he grew up in an area of deprivation, uh, and has seen uh, the consequences of that. How you know how you know people's lives are reduced to ugliness and and poverty uh, mm -hmm. when um, you know these are these are the these are the these are Jesus's little ones. These are the people whom whom Jesus has on his heart uh, more than anybody, uh, as much as anybody. And how to reach those people with the gospel? You know, we you know we we can be a pretty middle class mm -hmm. uh, church, the Church of England, and to be able to reach out to outlying estates. Uh, and to people who um, who don't who think that they're worthless, mm. to be able to show that they are of infinite precious worth to God, will be a wonderful thing for St Barnabas as a community to do. Oh, that's great. So um, as we look to the future with our communities and everything that we're we're looking to, what um, what's your take on all of this? What what excites you as uh, we go forward? Well, it's what excites me is that you're alive. You know, you're alive to and in the in the spirit of uh, the spirit of God. Uh, that um, you have been given a vision for for transformation and growth. Um, and the thing is, that, the point is, of course, that my, my one of my mantras is that um, uh, growth is an outcome, not a purpose. Uh, our, our purpose is transformation in and through Jesus. Um, and and the the gospel of of love and hope um, that has that has been given to us. Um, so, but it's, you, you can see that transformation going on in in your communities and in the parish. Um, now, it's crazy to say, well, okay, how are you going to apply this um, in in fresh ways that would require courage and uh, and persistence and resilience um, and being sensitive. Uh, to those around you, um, but I see all that going on, and I think that the other thing I just say is that, as I said, go for it, be bold, um, but also um, be ready that not everything will work out in exactly the way you've planned. I mean, I know Anne, that you're a very ordered and orderly person, um, and uh, the um, but sometimes, of course, that's not how the Holy Spirit works, and sometimes we 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 get to um, we get from A to C via Q and Z. <laughs> that's very true, yes. <laughs> and so I think that that's about, um, so also that in all of this excitement, it's also managing um, temporary disappointment when something doesn't, when one thing doesn't exactly work as people would have hoped it for, but also um, the readiness uh, for such, for sufficient innovation to know that some things will work for a season and then they need to be laid aside. 
And I think that in that sense, in that, in that context, part of the courage is knowing when to let go of something. Because I want to say to you, if you're doing all those other things, what are you going to stop? Yeah, thank you. Because there may there may be things uh, strategically that you need to stop that you can't financially afford in in these changed circumstances of the pandemic. Um, so what are you going to do with fewer resources? but just as much love and hope and praise. Because that's a challenge for all of us, isn't it? As a diocese, I know lots of churches, we're facing a future, an uncertain future, or rather, rather our, our future is not uncertain because our future is with a faithful God. But, but uh, the circumstances of our future, we don't yet know. Um, and I think that, so I, what I really encourage you to be is faithful through all of this, hopeful because what's the point of being a christian if you're not full of hope <laughs> um but ready to and the thing about pioneers you know um uh, years ago i was preaching in denver in colorado and the gift i was given i said oh, we've got a present for you a book of western theology and i thought well, it would be a book about st thomas aquinas or st augustine and it turned out about to be the theology of the wild west <laughs> <laughs> because where christians are divided into settlers and pioneers yeah but they are equal because pioneers move out of settled communities yeah. and may well to return to them. And so, of course, sometimes pioneers become settlers. Yeah. Um, so it's not disparaging people who are settlers, yeah. um, but it's saying, OK, if you're a settled community, who are you sending out? And um, what resources do we need to keep for the settlers so that they don't end up um, uh, suffering? at the expense of sending everybody out. So I think that the, um, mm. as they be bold and, um, uh, and, you know, and check on your rations. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Would you, um, would you pray for us as, uh, of course. at the end of our time here? That would be wonderful. Gracious God, we, we praise your name for your faithfulness to us, for your sending your own son to die on the cross as our savior. We want to be people who, um, who see the stone rolled away, who know and live the resurrection of Jesus. Make us more and more part of the new creation and as we uh, celebrate 150 years plus of uh, the mission in the name of, of St. Barnabas, we give you thanks for his example of courage, of insight, of, in, of uh, encouragement. We pray that we may um, go boldly as he did. And we ask that you will give us um, the strength and the wisdom to um, grow others past us, both in skill and um, in generation, that the work of, of this church and its many Barnabas communities may continue to grow and spread and reach out um, to those who have never heard the gospel and who need to know the worth that you lend them through your precious love. And we ask all of this and your great blessing upon us all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.